Hey guys, welcome back to Tommy Legends. Our next restoration is kit number 58124, which is the Tamiya Super Hornet. This is a lovely two wheel drive buggy, um, and I've been very lucky to um, find one in great condition. Um, so, although I'm calling it a restoration, it's um, more a tidy up. As you can see, this is the buggy, this is the state I got her in. Um, Really chuffed with this find. Obviously, the spotlights driver's not been painted, the body's not been painted, there's hardly any scratches on it. Um, the underneath of the chassis, it's not had a hard life at all. It's got full period electrics in it, manual speed controller, ACOMS, Techni Plus um, radio gear, and original wheels and tyres. Now, that's really important for this buggy because these wheels were only made for this one car. And these front tyres were only made for two Tamiya buggies, which was the Super Hornet and the Grasshopper 2 Super G, which is the one with the yellow CVAs and the luminous lime coloured wheels. Um, I've had quite a few of these, and I've got to say I've fallen lucky with this one because these front tyres haven't got any cracks in, um, which is awesome, and they've hardly been used. Rear tyres I wasn't too bothered about because um, these are standard, um, I'm not too sure what they were first on, but they're the Manta Ray and Avanti 2001 tyres um, and it's all solid, the car's solid, there's nothing wrong with it so um, let's find out a little bit more detail about when it was released So let's have a look at what we've actually got. So first of all, we've got an absolute pristine um, hotshot, uh, sorry, Super Hornet box. Um, I do love the Tamiya artwork. I know I keep saying it. The boxes are so special, and to find one in this this condition with the buggy itself is absolutely awesome. You know that that artwork there is just superb. Um, so we've got the box, which is absolutely outstanding. Secondly, obviously we've got the manual with it. Sorry, I'll just put this on the floor. So we've got this, again, an absolutely pristine Super Hornet manual, which is always nice to have. Um, I don't know the full history behind this car, but it's obvious with the box manual and car itself that it's it's been bought back in a day and, and pretty much done nothing. Um, flicking through the pages, as you can see, you know, it's, uh, and look what we've got here. So we've got the original decals, which is absolutely spot on. I've used MCI Racing decals before, a full set of them, and, and they're really good. But as we all know, there's nothing quite as good as a real thing. Um, you know, look at that. Oh, so made up. So that's what we've got. We've also um, managed, to, well, it came with it. We've got an Acorns Techni Plus um, old school Trana stick with obviously crystals. So this is going to be, going forward, obviously, after I finish with this car, this is a radio, the period radio gear I'm going to be using for all the cars. Because, as I say, we want to run all the cars with the same gear. So now I've got the period radio gear. Um, certain cars I'll have to run with an electronic speed controller, but any cars I can run with a manual speed controller, I'll do so. And I've also got a, a technical motor now that will be a sort of a standard motor to put in every car. Um, so that's... That's that, and let's just have a quick look at the car then. So as I say, she's in um, she's in great nick. Um, I've taken the clips off so you can have a look inside. Um, standard 540, I'll change that for a fresher motor. Um, there's probably nothing wrong with it. Um, I've just got a shinier one. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll have a look. Um, as you can see, the wheels and tyres, absolutely cock on. Just need cleaning up. Nice front, I mean, that's just superb. All the suspension's in place, um, everything absolutely cock on. Oil shocks front and rear. Um, they went with a different design on this model, um, which allows it to actually, um, the suspension to move at one side, as opposed to the Grasshopper where it kind of, it struggled. You actually do get a little bit of sort of movement, which allows the car to, to rock, um, which is great. It's a bit soft on the back end. A bit spongy, but um, I'll, as I say, I'll have a look and see what we can do before we get her running. And that's her underneath, which is pretty good. 
So it hardly needs anything, which is always that's loose. I have to get that tied out. So the first step is going to be um, painting, the, cleaning the body shell up, and getting it painted. Um, very, very easy. I'll take the spotlights and the driver off. Um, I'll say we'll give her a lick of paint, uh, a nice shiny black gloss finish, um, and then we'll get the um, decals applied to her. Um, and then we'll go straight to a running video, which is going to be awesome. That's uh, I'm super excited about that because I've never actually run one of these Super Hornets before. And then um, once we've done the running video, we'll get her cleaned up and um, we'll get some silicon. Well, we'll in the meantime, sorry, as I, when I get it done, I'll get the tyre writing done on the tyres. But when I finish running her, I'll get the wheels coated with a nice um, silicon spray just to um, keep them soft and, and stop any future cracking. Um, so let's get um, on with the restoration. Right, step one, I've um, stripped a shell, <laughs> as much as it is, you know, a couple of spotlights and that. What I've noticed is the, the plastic is, it's aged and it's yellowy. So I'm going to um, spray all the plastic up tomorrow with the Tamiya Grasshopper TS pen, which will make these nice and white. And then I'll use a black marker pen and the, the flesh colour to do the finisher driver off. Um, so that's a little extra process to do, but it's not a biggie. Um, I can't really do any of the body work tonight or writing on the tyres or anything because it's just getting a little bit late here and I, I need really strong daylight for that. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to make a start on the chassis. Um, first of all, I'll, I'll, I'll tidy all this wiring up, get rid of these tyre wraps, this burst balloon. Um, I'll need to dig out an aerial because obviously we're going old school so I'll need an aerial tube and I'll try sort this back rear suspension out because it's got far too much play in it. Um, if I can get all that done and then I will um, will power it up, I um, actually got a, a 7.2-1700 NICAD battery, yes NICAD, so I put some charge through that last night so I think it's going to be okay, um, so we'll put some power through it and make sure before we go any further that it's, it's all working. Right, so a couple of little problems, I've put a battery to it, first of all the old NICAD didn't work. <laughs> Mustn't have put any charge into it. Anyway, I've got a second NICAD which I fitted and that, that looks to have definitely charged. I've run it for a voltmeter. Um, so I powered it up to see what was going on and the um, this arm needs adjusting for the, to, to the manual speed controller. When you were giving it full beans, it was um, it was going right off the scale. I'll need to grease this as well. It's uh, dry as anything. Um, so I'm going to have to play about with that and get it lined up, but it is just this, this arm length here. Um, but then I had a look at the steering, so I put the wheels back on, um, and it certainly wasn't getting anywhere close to full lock on, on one side. See, it needs, to be, but it needs to be turning, obviously that's full lock, like that, and then when you go the other way, it's, 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 it's this outside one. Um, and for whatever reason, I'm just looking now. Yeah, so when, I, when I've taken the steering arms off, um, it, it allows it to do it. So I need to figure that out and see what's going on, whether these lengths are wrong. So I'll double check these lengths to the manual and see if we can get a better lock on one side. Um, I've got the aerial tube on. i got some um, rear, I don't know what you call them, the suspension spacers, which makes that lovely now. It's taking that player completely away. So that's good news. And I had to put the driver back in the shell because I noticed that when you um, when the body sits on, the driver sits on the top of the receiver. Now obviously this receiver was loose, but um, yeah, when it's sort of pressed down with the body clips, it sits on that receiver. Um, so I've, I've I've moved the wiring slightly and I've stuck the receiver down in this position now. Um, which makes that um, oops, sorry, it's on the battery connector, so it'll sit down even better. And then finally, um, when I was just digging out some information on the car, I've just found out that this, these two struts here need to be silver. Um, so I need to figure out how I'm going to do that. Um, but I need definitely need to do it because um, there's no point bringing it back to how it should have been with original decals and stuff if I'm not going to be lazy and not paint that. 
Um, so, right, let's crack on. Right, God, what a palaver that was, getting this thing going. So I've adjusted the arm, I finally got it centered properly. I had to actually use, I found in the box, some um, switch lubricant from back in the day. Anyway, it's done the purpose, I've lubed it up, lubed it up and it's much better. So the speedo's good to go. Um, the this, this steering, I don't know, the arms were pretty much dead on. I've sat it on this box because obviously you get a lot of towing as you press the shocks down. You know, on this particular model, it sags anyway and you want it to uh, for better steering. But it's it's quite hard to adjust the steering when it's kind of in mid-air. So with that box, it just allows me to push it down and sort of roughly see where they are. Anyway, the good news is, the old Techni Plus, da -da, it works. And when I put power on it, we have vintage working radio gear with band six for crystals in it. How cool is that? So as I say, I've I'll put if I push down on here just to see what you can sort of see. You see I've got much better lock. That's perfect. That's not nearly. And I'm not too sure what's causing it because there's nothing stopping it. So I'm gonna have to have a more a bit more of a play around at that. But anyway, it's much better than it was. Um, and as I say, I've got the, the back end all going on. That's all working fine. Um, which is cool, so I'll just leave that one in. So we're powered up, good to go. Steering's fixed. Um, so we'll get the wheels back off and we'll get the, tidy, the chassis all tidied up and then that's pretty much the chassis done. Right guys, that's the body shell done, and it was a complete nightmare. I've done a few of these and they're horrible. These these lines here, and then when you fold the decals over, you get creases. And you, 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 the trick is to cut in between the flames and then bend a bit over at a time, but I just, I, I just really struggle. It's a nightmare. But she doesn't look too bad, I must admit. Um, the black paint I've used, it's, I was a bit worried about it at first thinking it was a bit sort of textured but it's um yeah it doesn't look bad if you see the driver that's that has a decal for it as well so that makes it look pretty cool spotlights yeah she doesn't look too bad at all actually right let's stick her on the chassis <laughs> 